I am Flavia Zimmerman from the Australian Institute of International Affairs in Western Australia. And today we have with us Kenyan writer Yvonne Onwar. Yvonne has delivered a very thought-provoking address to um, the African Moving the Boundaries 39th conference hosted by the University of Western Australia. Thank you for being with us, Yvonne. Thank you, Flavia. Yvonne, um, can you please um, tell some remarks about your debut album, Dust, and particularly how it portrays Kenyan society and the challenges uh, faced on the ground by political actors in the country? Okay, um, Dust. Dust, uh, I guess on the surface of things, is a story of a family's dysfunction and how they seek to make, come to terms with that. Um, but uh, I think aspects of it mirror the dysfunction of uh, society, Kenyan society. Uh, particularly its political, uh, you know, the political trajectories that have tended to be rather messy. And uh, I guess what happens and happened in that book was my own quest to understand uh, what, uh, why the political situation is always in flux and always sort of restless and always tending towards unexpected violence, even when the parameters and things and inputs are everything, all indicators are that there should be peace and there should be progress. And I guess our book emerge, emerges out of that uh, both angst but longing for the promise. Mm. 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 Wonderful, Yvonne, thank you. And um, in your book, there is a very interesting remark that you, you state that Kenya tends to kill its best. Could you just please explain a little bit more? Okay. Um, I, I guess that uh, I think I, I think that remark was uh, associated with the death of one of the characters, but uh, it also comes from, as, if you want, a, la a lamentation on, on the part of the artist, the writer, my own. And I think it is true. I think that uh, it's a land of such beauty, such potential, such power. Um, such uh, incredible magic and it invites, it does invite the best of the best, not just among those that are born of it, but those who come to it and uh, something happens, I don't know why, uh, particularly uh, the best and the brightest of men and women uh, when you rise to the surface, when you offer something exceptional and different and hopeful and daring, uh, it is almost ine inevitable that something will come, something, someone, something will emerge, something terrible will emerge to cut you short. Mm -hmm. um, I was thinking of the uh, one, one of the characters, one of the political characters that I use as a as a, as a motif, but, but also as a, a presence in the book is the late Tom Boyer, the Minister of Planning, who was the most visionary presence, not just on the African continent, uh, but uh, known for his vision throughout the world. And uh, I, 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 I paraphrase the Malaysian Prime Minister, who when he was asked how Malaysia had managed to achieve what it had achieved in so short a time, um, and keep remember, I do remember that in 1963, when Kenya received independence, it was wealthier and more prominent than Singapore, Malaysia, South Korea, and all these countries. Mm -hmm. In fact, Malaysia and a lot of these countries got their blueprints for the cities and things like that from Kenya. So when he was asked that, uh, he was told that unlike unlike Kenya, we do not kill our visionaries. Mm. Yes, mm. And, and that's uh, that's been a pattern. Some of the best, so you know, the former minister of foreign affairs, Robert Oko. Again, it is at the moment when he represented Kenya so well in the United States, so well the entire country was tuned into his heart and his voice. A few weeks later, when he returned to Kenya, um, the powers that be and usually out of the most stupid of reasons,
some sort of probably jealousy. Mm. He ended up dead. Mm. So, uh, and so you see, it's that lamentation. It's mm. that lamentation. Mm, that's yeah. a very interesting point. You're stating that um, remarkable political leaders in Kenya, when they shine and when they, in some mm. ways, challenge the establishment. Yeah. They end up being sacrificed in this spire of power. Oh, what a beautiful way of putting it. The, and, and that word you use, sacrifice, is it. And it's almost a, a sacrifice to the, to the idol, idols of mm. mediocrity mm. and of less. Uh, it's almost as if they demand, that uh, they have this demand, this desire to consume that which is most beautiful and that which is most inspiring. Uh, about our people mm. and those to whom uh, Kenya is home. Mm. Well, thank you so much, Yvonne. Um, now, um, could you please explain to us uh, the current political situation in Kenya and how Kenya might move forward from political instability and, and from um, economic issues, like how current political leaders mm -hmm. can implement and promote change. Okay, I'm, I'm neither a politician nor an economist, but I will give a, <laughs> a, I might give an artist's uh, perspective and an artist who is uh, in love with her own country. So, um, uh, we are, uh, you know, a, a, stra a stranger coming into the country would assume that um, there is peace, tranquility, and stability. But that's one of the main faces of Kenya. We, and I think part of the challenge is simply this, and I'll, and I'll lay it out right up front, is that uh, um, it's not just the Americans who think they're exceptional in the world. Kenyans do. We expect to be the best in everything. <laughs> so, so you understand that perspective. My own perspective is also informed by that. We demand to be the best, mm. um, but we fall always fall short of our own expectations. So that probably informs our own restlessness and our disturbance. Uh, so we we emerged with a, const a new constitution a couple of years ago. It's a celestial constitution. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but we have managed to turn something sublime into uh, mud. Mm -hmm. I don't know how, but I, it's, it's, it's by some miraculous, some negative miracle that we managed to turn something that should have been exquisite and transcendent into n rubbish. Turn in, but at least it's still holding the country intact. So what's happening is uh, uh, because the new constitution was just implemented, uh, we're in place of flux, and of course, I guess, I guess to cut cut the politicians some slack, um, they don't they didn't know what they were getting into, and it's kind of a lot of interpretations are going on, and I imagine that there'd be years of a certain uh, restlessness before um, the meaning of the new constitution gets uh, gets stabilized. Mm -hmm. um, but on the more on another on, on the economic front, of course, because we've got a lot of inputs from all over the world, particularly China, um, informing our new relationships uh, in uh, perhaps unexpected ways, ways that uh, I think even as a country we haven't really thought of. Um, there are again, it's one of those things that are in a state of flux. If you if you look at the World Bank reports, of course, they're giving us give, they're giving Kenya glowing reports. Those of us who are citizens and belong to that place roll our eyes um, and are multi mildly cynical, okay? And kind of ask, okay, why are you giving these glowing reports when we know that the cost of price of living has gone up, right? We feel it. And mm -hmm. the cost of fuel has gone up and goes up every day. Mm -hmm. We feel it and we see it. Uh, what actually is going on? It does not help that we've got an abysmal bunch of uh, political. I have no adjective to describe them. Mm -hmm. I'm not down for them. Um, mm -hmm. The so-called leaders who have uh, um, embarked on a consumption spree. Mm -hmm. um, infrastructure projects we do not need. Um, uh, 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 what, what do you call it? Consumption of our tax money, 
for their own personal profits and mm. impact projects. Mm. Um, so there's that too, and uh, I think that is the that aspect, the 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 more human, the whole, the human rottenness aspect is the thing that um, um, impacts both politics and the econ economics mm. the most right now. Mm. I really like the way you phrase your so-called leaders, and it seems to be a very pervasive issue of developing nations in general. Yes. So-called leaders that instead of governing for the people. They seem to be exploiting the system themselves. They become vampires and parasites, and I keep wondering why. I'm beginning to, rather than look at them uh, in outrage, how oh, dare you? I keep thinking, maybe the approach should be, oh, you poor things, you are sick, you're not well, are you? Mm -hmm. And uh, mm -hmm. the many therapeutic processes that are necessary. I don't, because uh, I mean, this cycle, this perpetual cycle mm -hmm. of. Uh, mm -hmm. Of, of, of loss and lack and uh, destruction, even of that which does not need to be destroyed, uh, the the consumption to the point where there is nothing left. Yet there is more than enough for everybody. Actually, there is so much more mm -hmm. than enough for everybody. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, it's become part of the questions, I guess. Even as a an artist and author, one seeks to find out because one, well, you know. What, what, what does their humanity actually mean for them, mm -hmm. these, these men and these women? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, there were two um, statements that um, you made earlier mm -hmm. that um, I would like um, to investigate a bit more. Uh, one of them, in an earlier conversation, yeah. you mentioned um, that Nairobi, there are many Nairobis in Nairobi. And um, I just would like to know to which extent this um, diversity and this pluralism has been um, explained in the local literature. Okay. And that's one thing. And another thing I found fascinating when you yourself mentioned <laughs> that you have a relationship with Nairobi that is very much like an abusive relationship. So if you could just explain a bit more to us what okay. you as an author and an artist meant by that. Okay, okay I'll start with the first question. Uh, Nairobi's diversity. It's, uh, I, 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 I had a friend from Italy who came to Nairobi for the first time and we'll hang around for kind of a week or so. And he, he, she kept saying, why do I feel at home here uh, when I should not feel at home here? Mm. Uh, and that kind of explains Nairobi. Nairobi is a kind of, uh, when I'm being mean, I call it a transition zone, like, an, you know, the, like the airport lounge. It's a place where if you're, in if, you're, if you're a human being from any part of the world and you're in between places uh, and you land in Nairobi, you will find a home, you will find your place. Um, it, it, it's a very it's got a very, it's a very strange character of that city, um, and you can then decide to live within that place of yours, and never ever interact with the many other parts, with the many other bubbles that form uh, the city, that mm. are the city, and you can live uh, you can live decades in that bubble, and leave and then discover that there were other parts of Nairobi and act very surprised. But that is not my Nairobi, as, as many have said. <laughs> uh, it's, uh, no, but I don't think we have dealt uh, enough with it in literature, uh, only because even when I write my Nairobi, it does not necessarily reflect, in a very strange way, the, the other Nairobis. It would be very hard to do so. Because it's, these are like micro universes, entire universes uh, within this little space. Mm. Yes, yes. Mm. So, my relationship with Nairobi, uh, when I say abusive, what do I mean by that? Uh, I've tried to leave that city. It's, it's like being in a relationship. <laughs> it's, like, you know, it's bad for you, it's really bad. <laughs> And then Nairobi just lose you back. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, 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 yeah. Sometimes, uh, uh, yes, uh, 
I use some harsh uh, words uh, to describe her. <laughs> but then she can, she's also a shape changer, so it can be a he as well. She's, he, he's the kind of like the, you know, the, the, the leather wearing motorcycle. Bye, Q. Bye, Q. <laughs> Dude. Just with a cigarette dangling. And you're like, you're bad, bad, bad for me. But what can I do? <laughs> keep seducting you yes. and you keep coming back. Keep seduction. And then when you leave and say, never again. We are over. We are through. <laughs> um, and, uh, oh gosh. Yes, you go. But then uh, maybe I leave for maybe two years. And then this longing, this ache. Um... And it's a seduction of all the senses. There is a way that when you when you land in the city, I hope you one day visit, you will understand what I mean. Mm. It's the color, the color of the dawn that is like no other color. Uh, when you step out of the plane, there's such a distinct uh, scent, mm. And, mm. and it's everything. And the it's aroma awesome. of Kenyan <laughs> coffee yeah. in there. There's coffee, <laughs> there are clothes, there's uh, there's there's. It's, if, if, you know the smell of orange because that's the color of the dawn. Um, there's mango. There's everything there, and mm. there's a there's just a way in which uh, the city embraces you if, or, or or fills you. That's more more mm. it, it fills you. Mm. But after it's got you in its claws, which at first you thought were hands, um, it then beats you up, shots you up, like kind of beats you. Mm. Um, so that you can be conformed in her image and likeness, uh, even when you don't want to be that. Mm. And then you say, I'll never come back again. And yeah, so it's that. But I will try this time, I'll try. <laughs> <laughs> that's our relationship. Mm. I sit here, I love and I love. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very interesting, Yvonne. Thank you so much. Now, just our final remarks. Um, what do you think um, the future holds for um, Kenyan and Australian relationship and how Australia could contribute to the African continent? And, and, and how do you see a relationship unfolding between Australia and, 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 and Kenya, and, and there's a change um, in the balance of power as well, like growing Chinese influence Huge in Huge. Kenya. So if you could just give us some final remarks. I love that. Okay, um, I think, yeah, I think, what, I think some things we tend to forget, maybe those who are in politics, are, is that all relationships are human relationships. And relationship comes from um, a first encounter and the discovery of the other. Without all this other stuff, all these other, you know, the, all the all the baggage, um, I wonder if it is possible to engage just as human beings, you know, mm. um, to figure out uh, what are the things that uh, motivate, drive, what are the things I mean, uh, you know, both na you know nations desire of each other. And for themselves, and I think they, the you know the element of mutuality is so important. Apart from Australia, um, what what would Australia want and desire from mm. the human space? And I think mutuality is the is the one way that uh, relationships as you know strengthen. Um, the, apart from uh, the shared uh, what do you call it uh, shared humanity, um, we share we share an amazing seed. The twenty first century. As uh, Robert Kaplan put it, is uh, is the Indian Ocean is the is the 21st century ocean. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a center of so much power. You know, if you think 70% of the world's energy passes through the Indian Ocean, for example. Oh, and that's you know one of the things that has certainly happened is uh, all sorts of mineral, oil, and fuel finds off the coast of Kenya and in Kenya itself. Australia has Australia has a very strong footprint in the extractive industries in Kenya. Which, I mean, for us, it's completely new. Mm. For Australia, we've been doing it for years and years. So there's a lot um, to learn, share, discover uh, around that. And, you know, best case practice and all of those things. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope uh, you can teach us how to play rugby. <laughs> if we need to learn and then beat you. <laughs> That's my greatest hope. <laughs> Thank you so much, Yvonne. You're welcome, Flavia. You're welcome. Fascinating <laughs> talking to you. And, uh, well, 
Thank you for being with us and um, if you wish uh, to check our website for more information on the AIAWA in our national office, um, just see the information online and um, thank you for being with us.